In today's masterclass, uh, I wanted to uh, discuss uh, some of the complexities of uh, modelling roof geometry, and um, I picked a job that oh, let's drag, drag this PDF over um, that has quite a few things in it that uh, highlight some of the skills you need to create this model. Um, one could argue all day that uh, it should be easy, but yeah, it, it, it is, but you have to understand the tools you've got and pick the right tool out of the toolkit and use those tools appropriately. So um, the first step that I would normally take for this is just have a quick look around and make sure I've got all the information I need and scroll through all the architectural plans and just have a quick look and see everything's sort of there and I don't care about what's under the roof, I'm really looking for what's in the roof. <coughs> um, and oh, here we go, this is what we're looking for, a roof plan. Even says it's the roof plan, that's useful. Okay, so, but I do notice that there's no real useful dimension on here and I'm not seeing any pitch dimensions displayed which is not very helpful. So, um, we'll get there and, and I'll, I'll show you how we do that. <coughs> now, uh, one, one of the things you can do with the software is read the entire PDF document in. Well, I guess that's alright, you just select the page you want. Um, but I find it just as effective to use our snipping tool and grab a new snip and we get as much of that roof as we can and, and I find this works just as well as reading the PDF in um, so there we have that uh, it's been snipped and it's in our clipboard ready to go so we minimize that for a minute and uh, just have a look at the rest of the pages trying to find a some information about the pitch and I'm not seeing any information about the pitch which is a bit of a bother but never mind we'll get around that so um, first of all let's get our uh, get our image into um, into the workspace so minimize our PDF and we go from the main menu construct roof track outline enable underlay and I can open up the PDF but I've decided I'm not going to do that I'm going to paste from the clipboard it wants to save the job, so I'll save this as uh, race test, however many tests I'm up to, and job number one, and we hit OK. So we've got our PDF in there stra um, our, uh, straight away via the, uh, the, clip the clipboard. So um, it comes in at a random scale. And the, uh, the next step is to scale this to ensure that I've got it at full size. So we hit the scale rotate button and with the, um, the scale rotate button there's actually a lot going on in here if you want it to. The, um, you've got the option here to, to adjust uh, the model and the underlay image, the model only. Not sure why you'd want to do that but maybe if you've got the scale wrong and you realise after you've finished the job that you've messed it up um, or you can just just uh, select particular entities or parts of the job and rescale that um, or just scale the selected entities or just scale the image. So the, the most likely scenario uh, will be that you'll scale the model if you've modelled it to the wrong scale uh, but in that case you've been tracing the image so the presumption is you're going to rescale the model and the image. Um, image only that, that, that will typically be used in the situation where you inadvertently delete the uh, underlay image and have to bring it back and then um, and then it's a different scale to the model that you're halfway finished so um, that, that's that's probably the most likely use uh, over and above the one that I use regularly which is scale the model and the image okay so um, what else have we got here? Uh, we can also scale uh, based on a um, just the scale in the entire job. We have this thing, the program is called a tie bar. Now, as you know, we're working in X, Y, and Z, that is to say three axes or 3D. We're in 3D the whole time. Even if you only think you're work, uh, drawing stuff in 2D, the system is recording everything in 3D and uh, this will become very apparent shortly when I show you some other tricks. Um, but this tie bar allows you to select a different scale factor in X, Y and Z if you want to. 
Now, it's not often used, um, but I have seen situations where if you run a, uh, a plan through a flatbed scanner, often the X scale and the Y scale are different. So uh, this becomes a useful tool to make those microscopic adjustments that you need in X and Y. But most of the time, you will be scaling in um, in all axes proportionately. <coughs> and uh, uh, so next I need to put in a, uh, a value from uh, from the dimensions in the drawing. So wh what I need now is the longest dimension I've got in the job. So if I go back to our PDF for a minute, and I think I saw on here somewhere a dimension <coughs> of, of the floor plan and there was an overall dimension of 100 feet somewhere there, I saw that. So there we go. So from one extreme to the other extreme, we zoom in there, bingo, there it is. So the overall dimension of this place is 100 feet. So we measure the overall dimension. So we come from that end of the, of the job all the way to the other end. And that's come in at 26 meters, but we know it to be 100 feet. Now, this is interesting uh, that you may not know about the software. We 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 work the base units in, in metric, but the software is um, I, I can't say ambidextrous bilingual. Um, it it's it will recognise whatever units you give it, provided it's clear. So. I know that that's 100 feet. I have no clue what that is in metres. I think it's around 30 metres plus or minus a bit. But um, so if I tell it that's actually 100 feet, the so and I'm working in metric, it will convert that to metric and scale it to the right dimension. So the measured dimension is 26.3. The actual dimension is 100 feet. Now I hit scale, and the job is uh, instantly rescaled. So it looks like nothing's happened, but it's actually now full size. And we have a button here, check measure. So uh, one thing to, to you should always do after you've scaled something is 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 verify that you've scaled it correctly. And that's come in at there we go. Uh, 100 feet is 30.4 meters. So it was 26 meters. It's now 30.4. So you can say, yep, okay, we've scaled that correctly. Job's right. And when you when you checking stuff uh, don't be don't be afraid to zoom right in get 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 uh, really down and dirty with it get close um, the closer you get the more accurate you'll be even though we're only using um, we're only using a, 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 a clipped image um, you can still get quite uh, good precision um, okay so something else on this uh, scaling and rotating and messing with the images of model stuff um, you've got a thing here called rotate now uh, let's just say for example um, the image came in skewed like that <coughs> now if you're doing an aerial image from a drone or from Google or whatever it's um, hardly ever do do the people taking these photos uh, uh, consider the, uh, the poor guy trying to do the takeoff and I personally find trying to work in, a, in skewed like that is, is um, a bit irritating so we have this rotate button and read the prompts, it tells you what to do. Locate the first point, defining the horizontal axis. So I'm gonna get that corner there. <coughs> and uh, and I'll go up the other end, locate the second point, defining the horizontal. And left click there. And pay a bit of attention. I mean, I see how the cursor and the uh, and your, your elastic band thing is um, straight up the middle of all those um, pixels. Left click. And now I'm rotated back to back to square. So, and you can do that a couple of times if you think I'm not quite I'm not quite there. If you know if I've missed it by a pixel or something, just uh, just have another crack at it. Um, so I want I want that to be the x-axis, and you can see, see uh, it's, you know, it's not quite right. I don't bother. So not a problem. Um, the important thing is you get yourself comfortable with the job. And, um, and it becomes easier to work with. And I've got a zoom button there in case you, um, you get, get a um, lazy middle finger and you can't use your scroll wheel. But if you want to zoom in and out while you're trying to find what it is you're looking at, or any time you go into the M for measure button, uh, you can scroll in and out there too. So um, there's our, there's our uh, underlay image 
and it's been scaled, we've rotated it, we've checked the dimensions and we're now ready to start digitizing. So we hit finish and we go into digitize mode. Now in digitize mode, um, we can actually use a combination of uh, uh, typing in exact dimensions. Uh, and most of you who have done the training course will realize you, that you've got the ability, if I just cancel out of there for a minute, um, of setting a direction um, and going up, down, left, right, and a distance. But you can do the same thing well, even if you're in digitize mode. So if I go to digitize, um, it wants to know uh, how I want to, um, to tie the, uh, or round to the nearest 45 degrees. Uh, that is to say, working orthogonally. Um, now, uh, I, I had one guy one day who had, had that set to one degree. Well, of course, none of the lines were square and the house was wonky as anything and it was just a complete waste of time. So um, if, if they built, and the aspiration of most builders is to build a square, uh, a house that's square, <coughs> or at least square on the corners where it's supposed to be square, um, set that to 45 and it will snap to 45 degrees or increments of 45. And it also wants to know if I want to snap to uh, an increment of a particular length. For most digitizing, um, uh, even 10 plus or minus 10 mil is very, um, very ambitious. Um, most of the photographs and the plans are precise enough. And, uh, and so plus or minus 10 mil, that, that's about the limit. Uh, you can set it to finer numbers, but not much point because you're not going to get much. You, you plus or minus a pixel and it could easily be up to 25 mil out. Anyway, so we hit OK and we start digitizing. So, as I said, get get close to the action. So I'm going to start that point there just because it feels good to me. And come along here and, and select the other end of the line. Now, notice um, that it's actually showing you the length that you've, you've achieved. And I'm, I'm snapping to... 45 degrees that is in this case 45 up down and around I'm, it's just snapping to multiples of 45 now if you happen to have a job that is um, that's not orthogonal uh, if you hold down the um, look it's got a, um, a wall that's just funny angle and you're tracing it uh, hold down the control key and now you can get any old angle you want so uh, that's useful some of these fancy architectural design places and or they're trying to get the uh, best result for the, the site um, and so they build it at weird angles um, this will allow you to, uh, to, to get to those weird angles so control key goes off grid um, and let your control key go and you're back to snapping to uh, orthogonally now um, so I come down here and I'm going to go to my next corner and that's telling me that it's um, it's it's at uh, five five or four, eight. So if we come in here, put that dimension in eight six three zero. Now, if I step back from there for a minute, if if you actually have a drawing with dimensions, and you can and the dimensions are clearly evident, instead of just digitizing freehand it often pays to actually type the real number. So even though we're in dig mode um, and basically tracing the outline, you can still uh, type in real numbers. So if I go down 8360 and enter, it goes bang on 8360 if that's the dimension you want. And if it's not, you go, oh, whoops, that's not right. Step back and type in the number you really want. So, um, so it's just a matter of of using the best of, and, and I find digitizing it's it's the best of both worlds um, I, I can I can provide real dimensions and often you get all almost all the way around a model and you get to the the lower left corner where you weren't paying attention and you blow me down there's three dimensions that are missing and so you go oh what do I do now well when you're tracing the underlay image um, you don't have to worry about that because if the dimensions missing um, you can actually just trace the uh, the line work and it'll give you a very good um, a very good approximation plus or minus 10 mil of of what you need it to be all right so uh, here we are um, we we've done the first two lines and if I now go close square uh, it closes out 
I'm going to do a pitched roof and I'm going to do metal, it's a single story structure so it's one story and the pitch, wow, this is a brother, um, I don't know what the pitch is. So um, what do we do now? Um, I looked all over the PDF, there doesn't appear to be a pitch thing, so uh, okay, alright, but I do have an elevation drawing. So if I go down to my PDF again and uh, zoom out and find that elevation drawing that we had here before, uh, I think it was east elevation or whatever it was there, that one past it, that one here, north elevation, no, that west elevation, let's use the west elevation. So um, we've got the, the west elevation there and if I snip that, get close, I'm going to need all that information, okay. That's in my that's in my snipping tool in my in my clipboard. Uh, minimise the PDF, and if I go into next to this um, section, the roof defaults there for defining the pitch. If I click on this ellipsis button, and I want to measure the pitch from an image, I can paste from clipboard. Bam! There's our elevation. So if I set the origin, so the origin's there base point is uh, that's all the same if I all the way across to there so make it longer because it means you can measure more accurately and the height point is sort of there somewhere I'm going to need that pitch later on and it looks like it's about 65 degrees so we on our little notepad we write 65 or we commit that to memory so the steep pitch is 65 so all right what about the pitch we're working on right now well the pitch we're working on right now is this one so the base point will be over there somewhere, that's about right, and the height point will be out there, out there, oh, there, 26 degrees, 26 and a half in fact, and that's good, and um, this little lean-to roof here, I'm going to need to do that next, so let's put the origin of that there, base point will be out there, and, and you get the drop. So this is allowing us to uh, this is allowing us to use the information that's been provided to oops to um, to get the information from the from the sketch and height point. I'm trying to get that a little bit more precise because I'm going to this is going to be important later on. Yeah, it's about nine and a half. So we, we record that number. Write that on our pad, nine and a half degrees. Okay, so if I hit OK on that, that number goes in the box and that saves us typing it in. But that's not the part of the roof that we're currently building. The part we're building is 26 and a half. So 26.5 degrees. There's no overhang. Uh, the eave height, um, I think that was at about 25 feet. That's near enough to say eight meters. We'll work eight meters. And we hit OK, and vertical plane there, and vertical plane there, right button, and go. Continue. So it's built our roof. OK, so that's the basic process for uh, using uh, underlay image, whether you import it from PDF or use the snipping tool from clipboard, uh, checking the scales, uh, using multiple units, of measurement, uh, rotating the image, then checking your dimensions and getting the correct pitch for the job. So uh, the next step in the, the process is to add the other parts of the job and that um, the, uh, the steep pitches on the side.